Hi, I'm going to show you how to make chocolate rose cake pops. Um, I'm going to go through very quickly how to make cake pops, just in case you've never made them before. It's very, very simple. Um, what I tend to do is keep off cuts of chocolate cake um, hidden away in the freezer. Um, and then if ever we want to make cake pops, we can. So get some chocolate cake, break it up into a bowl. don't like doing this, a bit messy. Break it up so it's nice and crumbly. Um, you can you can do as much of this or as little as you like. I'm just going to show you the small small bit. And then I'm just using some chocolate buttercream, and I put very very small amounts in. Um, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So literally, just start off with very very small bits, and just get your hand in. And squeeze it together and it starts coming together you can always add a little bit more if it's <clears throat> if it's if it is too crumbly and as you can see it's it's starting to stick and when you can get it together like that you know it's ready So now we've got our cake pot mixture ready, um, we're going to use this set of cutters to measure out uh, an equal amount of cake pop mix. I'm just going to use the, the smallest one which is one and seven eighths inch. All I'm going to do is use this as a guide really so that every single cake pop is the same size. And all I'm going to do is pop it in there. You can buy cake pop machines and other things, but I kind of like to use, I don't like buying lots of tools and equipment. So, so that we know that that is then uniform. If we do this to every single cake pop, they're all gonna be the same size. So just pop it out. That is too big to stick on a, a stick. It's just not, it won't hold on. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. And that's going to give me two cake pops. So then we know that every, you know, all the cake pops are the same size. So I'm just going to take those and really squeeze. Um, you know, if you're making plainer cake pops, you're going to really need to work and get that really nice and smooth. But because these are going to be covered in chocolate and the petals, it's not that important to get them completely smooth. So all the time I'm just compacting, making sure it's all stuck together. So here we have our two um, cake pops all nice and ready. I'm going to use a cake pop stick. It's, um, it's plastic. Um, it's better to use a stick than a straw. With a straw it won't hold the weight. But you can get these in all different sizes and colours um, and you can get paper ones as well. So anything you like really. Um, and then we're going to get our melted white chocolate, which I melted earlier. I'm just going to dip it in and then push it down. I don't want to make it right to the bottom. I don't want it to come out the other end. I It's about to this level, so it's just short of, of coming out of the end. And that's one done. I'll do the other one as well. You can see the level of the amount of chocolate. I'm just taking it to there. Using the melting chocolate, melted chocolate really helps keep the cake pop in place. Right, so I'm going to pop these in the fridge to firm up. Right, this one's been in the fridge and it's very firm now and the chocolate's nice and set. I'm just going to get the, the melted chocolate again and just dip it in. You can use plain chocolate or milk chocolate as well, don't, don't worry about which chocolate it is. Okay, this has started to set, but again, because this is going to be covered in chocolate fondant anyway, it doesn't matter if this is rough, but if you wanted to make nice smooth ones, you'd have to make sure the chocolate was a bit better than that. 
Right, so I'm going to pop this in the fridge. Put it in there, in the fridge, and it'll go nice and hard, and then we can attach our petals. Okay, so this is the cake pop that's all finished. It's all, all firmed up and ready to go. It's been in the fridge for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, what I'm going to use to make the petals is Renshaw chocolate flavoured ready to roll icing. Um, you can, there's various different brands and you can make your own. There's lots of recipes online to make your own. I, I normally do make my own, but I'm just using this because it's handy and convenient. Um, we're going to go back and use the cutter set that we were using before. We're going to use the small one for making the petals now. Um, we can just check that it's the right size look, if you can see. Um, you know, we know we're going to be able to get the petals on there and also I'm going to use the next size up, which is the two and a quarter inch. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the centre of the rose. I'm just going to take a little bit of sugar paste off. Sorry, chocolate paste. I'm just going to roll the sausage. And then roll it. Roll it out so I get a nice, not too thin, not too thick. I'm just going to cut myself. There's no right and wrong way to do this. I'm just going to start by rolling four minute round. I'm giving it a little pinch just to put a little bit of definition for the centre and so this can be as small or as, as big as you want really there's no rules in nature everything's different um, I'm just going to chop off a flat edge and then I'm going to get the Just a bit of melted chocolate. It started to go hard. It doesn't matter. And pop that down on top. And that gives us the centre of the rose. Right, now we're going to make the petals. So just roll this out. Take the small cutter, the one and seven eighths. I'm just going to cut four petals. And really, we don't want a lot of sugar paste or flat chocolate paste on this, um, because it just be won't be very nice to eat. So I'm going to cut the cut a section off. It's just just a little bit smaller than half. Right, so now I'm going to get a little bit more of my melted chocolate and I'm just going to spread it round. This is acting as a glue. So just, you can be quite rough. I'm going to take my first petal and I'm going to attach it to the side just so it comes up to the top. And then taking my fingers, I'm just going to pinch together that rose. And that forms the first petal. I can turn it around, put the next one on. Make sure it just overlaps a little bit. And again, just pinch. And then taking third petal, again we're overlapping it ever so slightly. I'm just making sure that it comes in the top here so that you can't see the cake pop. And then just a little pinch. Push it down and I'm just pushing it there. Take the last petal and this one's really got to join them all together. Pull it down a little bit with my fingers and just pinch that end. Okay, and that gives us the second layer of the petals. Okay. So now we're going to make the outer layer of petals. I'm going to use the two and a quarter inch cutter. 
which is the next size up from the first one. We just need to roll out four petals again. four petals and then we're going to take our rose um, you can always put a little bit more of uh, the white chocolate melted white chocolate on there if it if it doesn't stick but it should stick because it's cold the the chocolate sugar paste tends to stick to it and then this one we're gonna layer let's say it will just come down to the bottom and when you get up to the top put your finger in the your third finger in the middle of the petal and then your thumb and your first finger can just help form the point. Um, when I'm making roses I'm not too precious about where each leaf should go, each petal should go. It's nature and nature is different so you know every rose is going to be slightly different. I'm just going to stick it on there just so it's overlapping slightly. And again with this one. So I'm just going to pinch the middle and help the petals roll over. And the last one, I just make sure that this bridges really the two petals, make sure it's nice and firm and stuck down. And pinch. There. And you can just help it along this way by just pinching it all around the edge. Okay, and there's your chocolate rose cake pop. So I like to use a green ribbon just to tie around the cake pop. Little tip, don't try and tie it around the top. It's, it's more difficult to try and tie it right at the top of the stick. <laughs> you can stick it in a piece of polystyrene, it is easier. <laughs> Um, so once you've tied a bow, I like using this wired ribbon because then it holds its shape. And you've got your beautiful bow and you can just push it up to the top then and that saves you having to try and manoeuvre the ribbon around the cake pop. There you go. If you put more cake pops in there, it will hold itself. Okay, so that's your chocolate rose cake pop all nice and finished. Thank you.